Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about finding the inverse of a function. And to find the inverse of a function, what you do is you replace, if you're, if you're using function notation, you replace your f of x with y, you switch your x's and y's, then you solve for y, and what you found in that case now is the inverse function. Again, not all functions have inverses. They have to be one-to-one, -one, but um, definitely the, the problems I'm going to do in this video do have inverses, so more just want to focus on the procedure than all the, the nitty-gritty of that. So, Okay, so the first thing I do, I've got f of x equals square root of x plus 4 and then minus 3. So the first thing I do is I, I replace my f of x with a y, and then I just replace everything. So my y I'm going to replace with an x. My x I'm going to replace with a y. And now I have to solve this um, for y. I want to get the y by itself. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Okay, so you really can't um, combine that on the left. You'll just be left with x plus 3. And then we'll have the square root of y plus 4 hanging out. Okay, so now at this point, um, to get rid of the square root, we'll have to square both sides. Okay, so I've got to square the right, which means I've also got to square the left. Okay, so be careful at this point. I, I think a, an easy mistake to make would be to make this x squared plus 9, um, but that would be very much not correct. Because remember, x plus 3 squared, that is simply x plus 3 times x plus 3. So make sure you foil this part out. On the right side, we will just get what's underneath the square root, which is y plus 4. So now if I foil all this out, we'll get x times x, which is x squared. We'll get x times 3, which is going to give us a positive 3x. On the inside, we'll get another positive 3x. And then 3 times 3 will give us a positive 9 equals y plus 4. And now on the left side, I've got x squared plus 6x. And at the same time, I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So if I subtract 4, I'll simply be left with positive 9 minus 4, or positive 5 and that equals y, or equivalently I can say that this is the inverse function of my original function. Okay, so now we found the inverse function if our original function f of x was the square root of x plus 4 minus 3. So let's maybe uh, Let's do one other example here of finding the inverse. So again, it's mainly just re remembering to switch x's and y's and then just a little bit of tedious algebra. Okay, so suppose we have the function um, y equals 5x minus 3 over 2x plus 1. And again, we want to find the inverse of this function, assuming one exists, and it does. Um, again, for a function to have an inverse, it has to have that property of being one-to-one -one or passing the horizontal line test. So you could just graph these to, to determine that. Okay, I don't know. So 2x. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is replace the y with an x. And then again, everywhere there was a, an x on the right side, I'm going to make that a y. Okay, so now all I have to do again is I want to get y by itself. So I think that might be a little more tedious in this case, but the first thing I would do is, well, there's a fraction. To get rid of the fraction, um, you could think about x as being x over 1, and we can do cross multiplication to get rid of the fraction. So we'll multiply the top left by the bottom right, and the bottom left by the top right. So on one side of the equation, we'll get x times all of the denominators, so make sure you put it in parentheses. 
and then on the right side we'll just get 1 times this stuff which well I guess let's write it will just be that stuff okay at this point again I'm trying to solve for y so what I'm gonna try to do is get all my y's on the same side of the equation and to do that I'm just gonna distribute so I'll get x times 2y and I'm gonna write that as 2xy and then x times positive 1 is positive x I distribute my 1, I'll just get 5y minus 3. Again, I want to put all my y's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 5y from both sides. So on the left side, we'll be left with 2xy minus 5y plus x equals negative 3. But then I'm going to do the same thing to get rid of the positive x. I'm simply going to subtract it from both sides. So if I subtract it from both sides, it'll just get attached to the right side as a negative x, and then it'll be gone on the left side. Okay, so now we have 2xy minus 5y equals negative 3 minus x. And at this point, so the reason for putting y's all on the same side, the reason for putting the y's all on the same side is that I can factor a y out now. So I can factor out a y, and in parentheses I would be left with, I would need a 2x, and then I would need a negative 5. On the right side, I have negative 3 minus x. Well, to get the y all by itself, all I have to do now is simply divide both sides by the 2x minus 5. So I have to divide the right side as well by 2x minus 5. And that'll be my final answer. Okay, On the left it'll cancel out. And I'll get simply that y equals negative 3 minus x over 2x minus 5. And there's nothing else you can simplify or cancel there. We've now solved for y. We can replace that with our inverse notation, f and then little minus 1 of x. And now we found our inverse function. OK, so algebraically, you know, switching x's and y's and then solving for y, that can be a pretty hard procedure. So um, it doesn't always work out so cleanly. But Typically, if you're seeing problems in an algebra class and they're asking you to do it, it shouldn't be, hopefully, too many steps that you have to do. So, all right, I hope these examples make some sense and help you out. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them.